Hey, welcome back to Way of the Wrench, and on today's very special episode, I finally get to reveal what kind of vinyl artwork I'm putting on my virtual pinball cabinet. And not only that, I'm going to show you exactly everything you need to know to be able to do yours properly. So, let's get to it. All right, so the very first thing you need to know about attaching your vinyl artwork to your pinball cabinet is that the surface you are sticking it to needs to be perfect. Otherwise, any little imperfections are gonna get exaggerated and you'll see them in your final product. So what I mean by that is you've gone ahead and filled all those nicks and dings, sanded it completely smooth. I would recommend priming and painting it. And then when you're all done that, sanding this by hand to a 320 grit minimum. That way this is flawless and dead flat and the Final will have no problem sticking to it. Now, if you need any more information about that, I have a great video. I will post the link above for you to watch that. Now, once you have done that, we need to make sure this is chemically clean so that there's no oil or grease or dust on here that's gonna make this not stick. So what I recommend you use is some isopropyl alcohol, otherwise known as rubbing alcohol. Get a nice, clean, lint-free microfiber cloth and give it a wipe. Make sure that surface is clean so the vinyl will stick. Before you start, I would recommend you get a piece of cardboard or an old blanket or some old towels or maybe some towels that the wife doesn't know about and you're going to wash and dry really well and put back so she doesn't know underneath your cabinet so that you don't scratch up the cabinet that you've worked so hard on and as you continue with the vinyl artwork you're not scratching up the artwork as well. Now I highly recommend you start with the front of the cabinet artwork that way if it's got some kind of intricate designs on the side that spill over to the side artwork it'll be a lot easier to line up as opposed to starting on one side getting it a little off and then having to line up that front panel based off of where that is and then by the time you get to the other side it is completely off, not fixable and it's really noticeable. All right, another great tip for you guys is that when you get your vinyl artwork it's often shipped to you in a tube so all of the different pieces are rolled up really quite tight and if you go to try to install the vinyl like that you'll find that you spread it out and then it wants to curl back up and it's really kind of difficult to work with. So what I really recommend is getting a board or a flat wall or something like that where you can clip and just kind of hold the vinyl artwork and let it sag and you can let it sit for a couple days. That way when you go to do this work, it'll be nice and flat. Now, the time you've all been waiting for, let's reveal what the artwork is. Look at this, beautiful Tales of the Arabian Night artwork and it's gonna look great on my virtual pinball cabinet that I have been working so hard on. And it looks absolutely stunning in 4K on VPX. And it's one of the first pinball tables that I was ever able to beat. So it's got a very special place in my heart. Now I had some custom dimensions, so I had to get some custom decals made. And I ended up going with a company in Canada called Woodstock Custom Arcades. And the guy named Derek there really stepped it up and helped me out and put in some extra time and effort to make sure that everything was color matched and stretched properly and any little minor issues were fixed. So I highly recommend his company and I will put a link down in the video description below so you can order some great stuff from him. Awesome, let's keep going here. Now for aligning the artwork, there's a couple tricks I'm gonna show you. So the first one is, as you're trying to center it left and right and up and down, if you just bump the artwork, it's gonna move and be not where you want it. So I highly recommend you get a heavy weight and a cloth underneath, or in this case, I wrapped a piece of metal with some cloth. That way when I sit it down on there, this will still be able to be moved a bit, but it won't kind of just slide away on me and, and lose its orientation. Now, when you're trying to figure out where it needs to be in centered, you can use a bright light from a flashlight or your cell phone light and go around the edge and you'll be able to see where the edge of the cabinet is through the vinyl artwork. That way you can kind of go left and right and make sure it looks even. Or you can even use a ruler and measure to make sure it's exactly centered and parallel. Now, once you've got this exactly where you want it to be, you're going to get some painter's tape and you're going to tape this down on one end only and up to about the halfway point and then we'll talk about the next topic. Okay, just do a final check, make sure you're centered and then you want this exactly where you want it. All right, so before we start here, there are two methods of applying your vinyl artwork. There is the wet method and the dry method. And the reason why people are so heated whether you should 
always be doing the wet method or you should always do the dry method is the fact that they both will equally work and you'll have equal success with either method as long as they are done properly. Now, both of them have pros and cons, so let's go through them. Now, the pros for doing the dry method is that there is nothing in between the vinyl artwork and your flat, smooth surface. So as soon as you stick that down, it is stuck and you don't have to wait any length of time. You can start assembling your cabinet. So realistically, probably doing the dry method, you'll be done your vinyl artwork in about two hours. Now, some cons for doing the dry method is it's a little less forgiving for mistakes. And what I mean by that is when you're putting down the artwork, if you have an air bubble or a little speck of dust, if you flop the whole side down and trying to smooth out air bubbles and finding dust, it's a lot harder to clean out. It's not impossible, but what I recommend instead is that as you are putting it down, if you see an air bubble by changing your uh, way you're looking at the vinyl and looking at the light, you'll be able to see little air bubbles and specks of dust. If you stop immediately and lift it back a bit, pick out that little speck of dust, smooth out that air bubble and continue that way, you'll have a lot less issues. So let's talk about the wet method now. Now, one of the biggest pros with the wet method is the fact that it is way more forgiving for mistakes and even alignment issues with your vinyl graphic. And the way it does that is you get a spray bottle, fill it up with water, and then add no more than a teaspoon of just regular dish soap. And you spray it onto the cabinet itself. And then once you remove the backing off the vinyl, spray it as well. And when you go to put it down, if there's any air bubbles or any issues, you could just peel it back up or alignment issues, you should be able to slightly move it a bit. And once everything is completely perfect and there's no air bubbles or any debris underneath the vinyl, the idea is you take a squeegee, and I'd recommend getting a smaller version of this, and you squeegee out any air bubbles and all the water all at once, like that. Now, the cons for that is the water you are using might not really go well with the material you've used to make your pinball cabinet. So for example, if you used MDF, I would not do the wet method at all. And if you've decided not to paint your uh, cabinet grade plywood, if it's bare wood, I would not use the water method at all. Um, MDF, it can literally absorb all the water and puff up and just get destroyed. Now the other con for doing the wet method is because you have a little bit of moisture in there, once you've squeegeed it all off, there's a chance that as you're moving this down and positioning it to do the other side, that it can slightly move still because the water hasn't dried out and had it fully stuck. So that is a con. And so I would recommend that when you do one panel, I would wait overnight. Uh, that way you don't have this thing move on you and then get stuck in that position. Now, another thing to note when you're doing the wet method, uh, because you are rubbing a squeegee over your artwork, you may want to spray a little bit on top of the vinyl artwork as well. That way this will glide a lot better as you're squeegeeing out the air and not damage the artwork at all. All right, for my cabinet, I am choosing to do the dry method. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. Now to do this, you're gonna need some supplies. You need a little squeegee for putting down these vinyls and it's about $15 online. And basically what it is, it's a hard piece of plastic and it comes with these little felt stickers that you put over the edge so that as you're smoothing and applying down the vinyl, you're not scratching it up. Now you're also gonna need a pair of scissors so that you can cut the backing off of the vinyl, which you'll see in a sec. And I would also have a microfiber lint-free ready to go with your isopropyl alcohol. So that way you can give one final little wipe and make sure there's absolutely zero dust in there when you go to put it down. Okay, we're gonna lift this side up to the halfway point. And what we need to do is peel back the paper and we're gonna cut off the backing. Now, you're gonna take your scissors. We're gonna cut off this backing. Don't tear it, otherwise all that dust from the paper will go into your artwork. Okay, at this point, do one final wipe. Make sure there's no dust on there. Okay, and give it a little bit of time for that isopropyl alcohol just to dry up, evaporate. Okay, if this part here gives you a little bit of anxiety, it's uh, not a bad idea to get a second person to help you with this job, but it is a one person, as you're gonna see, I'm doing it. So now I'm just gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna go very, very slowly with my squeegee, and just do light pressure as I push it down, do the top and the bottom. And as you go, you're going to look for any kind of air bubbles, pockets that show up, any little bumps, they'll be really quite obvious if you have a speck of dirt underneath there. 
And if there is, like I said, just back up, slowly pulling up. This is looking great. Now don't worry about the seam there. The seam there is from the backing that's still on the other half of the piece. And just slowly make your way across the panel. Make sure that you don't trap any air bubbles. And if you do find you have an air bubble, you can just try to work it out to the front because you haven't got a lot in there. And worst case scenario, you can lift up on the vinyl and back it up until you get to the point where that air bubble is. And then work it back out. There we go, had a little bubble, now it's gone. Like I said, just take your time. It's no big rush. That way it'll sit down nice and smooth. You don't have someone helping you pull it slightly and holding it tight. So just go nice and slow, make sure you got no air bubbles. No specks of dirt getting trapped. And every now and then just look in the light to see a little better those air bubbles and possible specks of dust. All right, I thought I had an air bubble. It's just the start of the cutout for the plunger. All right, that's the first side done. Now let's do the other side. We could just move this over. It's not really needed. It's already kind of stuck down on this side. And we are now gonna take off our painter's tape. Now when you take it off the artwork, go very, very slow with it. That way you don't risk actually taking off the artwork. That would be absolutely horrible. Okay, now to do the other side. Now we're gonna slightly peel back the last surface just to make sure there's nothing in there, no air bubbles. And then we're gonna peel this art, the backing off. Okay, another spray of the isopropyl alcohol. Okay, and then it's just a repeat of the other one. Okay, at this point, you're gonna take a brand new X-Acto blade or a very sharp razor blade, and you are going to cut off all the excess vinyl. Now we'll do another step a little bit later. Uh, tricks, put the edge of the X-Acto blade against the wood once you get to it, and that way you can use that as kind of a guide, and it's not kind of a sh -sh -sh sawing motion. It's a nice sharp blade. You should be able to just kind of hold it at a slight angle and just drag it along and try to do these in one cut. That way it comes out nice and clean.
right, now that we've rough trimmed the vinyl artwork to the edge of the cabinet, we have another issue. Over the long term, and every time your arm or your leg rubs against the corner edge here, it's gonna start grabbing the, just the edge of that vinyl artwork and start to peel it up over time. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna measure about one to two millimeters in from the edge, get a nice straight edge, and take your X-Acto blade and make a nice slice, not a lot of pressure, just enough to go through the artwork, and then you can peel off that two mil. We'll do the same when we do the side panel, and that'll leave us roughly with a four mil kind of black space for the corner. And that corner is where you're gonna start touching on the paint instead of the edge of the vinyl, and it should make it last a lot longer, and it will look way more original. And then once we've got the side panel done the same way, in case we got a little paint chip out, and to seal the edge of that vinyl artwork from lifting even more, we're gonna get an oil-based paint pen, and we're gonna just very carefully run it along the edge to seal the edge of that artwork, and then it'll never lift up. Okay, for this left side panel, there's quite a bit of extra vinyl here on the ends and even some at the top. So I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and trim it down so it's closer, not right to the edge. Now, when you go to position where the side art should be up and down, if you've got graphics that connect to the front, like this pillar in this case, you're gonna have to be really kind of picky and make sure that it is lined up properly. Whereas some, there's just black space around the edges and it won't matter too much. But in this case, it does. Now, there's a couple things to think about. If you have some issues where the pattern changes slightly over this distance between the side and the front, you have to remember that there's a pinball leg here and the pinball leg protector that's gonna cover up about this much of the art. So really, if you're trying to line up anything and it starts to go out of alignment near the bottom, that would be better. That way what you're seeing at the top is aligned. All right, the side is much the same. It's just gonna be rinse repeat. So put a heavy weight with a cloth underneath, tape it, double check that it is centered up and down, left, right, and that your patterns from front to side line up, and then you're ready to go. Now, this is a much bigger sheet of vinyl artwork, so I do not recommend going half like I did on the front panel. I would cut it up into thirds and maybe even quarters, whatever you feel comfortable with. So I'm gonna start with this part here, and I wanna start on this end so that this gets exactly where I need it to, and then I will peel this back and do kind of thirds or quarters of the backing at a time so that I can get this all done and with one person. If you've got a second person to hold it tight and um, to the sides, that would probably work a little bit better, but uh, like I said, I'm gonna do this solo, so. All right, easy peasy. Now we just continue on. So we're gonna peel this back to here, cut about that much, cut it off, very carefully squeegee up, cut it off and just continue to the end.
Okay, and then once you're all done, if you happen to miss a little bubble and it seems too late, all you do is you take the point of your X-Acto blade, put it right through in the center of the bubble and you can work those out and honestly, they disappear. That little hole, you can't see that again, especially on a busy artwork like this. Okay, now for the back box, because I have about a half inch black border around this trim, I really, really used that flashlight trick to make sure with a ruler that I was evenly spaced so I didn't have it sitting off center. Other than that, it's pretty much the same until we get this down and I'll show you the next thing. Oh, 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 oh. absolutely flawless. Not a single bubble or speck of dirt in there. So it was really a nice treat to kind of finish up with this. It was a lot easier to do these and quicker than the side panels. So for maybe you guys at home, maybe do these first, kind of get the hang of what you're doing. And that way, when you get to the bigger one, it's uh, not so daunting. And um, yeah, like I said before, if you get another person to help hold the vinyl tight as you're doing it, it'll make it a lot easier too. Now, if you're wrapping vinyl around something that's got T-molding and those slots for the T-molding, you've got a couple options here. Option one is instead of just trimming it flush with the edge of the piece, you could wrap it around on the other side where the T-molding goes and trim it just kind of the bottom edge of the T-molding groove. That way you can kind of tuck it in there and when you put your T-molding on, it kind of pins it and might keep it tight. Uh, the corners you're gonna have to kind of cut away because otherwise it'll wrinkle up on you. Um, so there's that option, or you can do whatever I showed you before and just trim it right flush with the cabinet, which I think is what I'm gonna do. Uh, because realistically, the T-molding is gonna just cap the end and it isn't quite flush. It kind of sticks out just a touch, so it's already there to protect the vinyl. And I guess even a third option is to measure back from the edge about a millimeter, just like we did on the side cabinet, and just trim that and uh, use the paint pen to kind of hide the edge and to seal it in. So those are your options. I think I'm going to just trim it flush um, and then go from there. Um, now one word for you though, if you do decide to bend this, wrap this over and use a T uh, molding groove to hold this in, be aware that sometimes just depending how it sits and whatever, it can kind of buckle around the edge here on the cosmetic side of the vinyl. 
So uh, you have to be a little careful. And um, honestly, I just don't think it's that uh, worth that much time and effort to do it that way. So I'm gonna trim it flush. Oh yeah, that turned out nice. Nice 12 millimeter or half inch border all the way around the artwork. Nice and even from top to bottom, left to right. Yeah, that turned out great. Okay, I'll finish the second one off camera. All right, last thing we gotta do is take our oil-based paint pen in the color of your paint and your decal artwork and give it a good shake before you use it. And you're going to very carefully use your other finger on some other part of the cabinet to keep it as a guide so it's nice and steady because we don't want this paint to go onto our decal and ruin our decal. We just want to cover the edge of the sticker decal itself so that you don't see that white line. And if you have any chip out or anything like that, this is what's going to hide that. And then not only is it going to kind of blend that in with your paint, it's also going to seal that decal on the edges right to your paint. So let's go around and do all that. Right, there's a wrap on another video from Way of the Wrench, this time on everything you need to know to be able to put your vinyl artwork on your virtual pinball cabinet. Hopefully you were able to get something out of the video, and if you have any questions or concerns about what was going on in the video, put it down below in the comment section, and I will get back to you as soon as possible, and I'll try to help you out. Uh, now that this is all done, I guess the next video is putting it all together, so I'll do one wrap-up video for that and uh, give you some extra little stuff. So we'll put it all together in one video, but I'll show you about the grounding wire and how to pretty up all the wires so it looks absolutely neat inside. Maybe we'll throw in some LED lighting as well. If you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram, and until next time, take it easy.